Hello everyone, we're going to be talking about this budget CV Life bipod, $45, there's a lot of features on this, uh, I'm going to be shooting on this uneven ground here, which is what you are likely to encounter in nature, so the legs lock in, so when I place the rifle on this uneven ground, as you can see, it's 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 basically uh, canted in the wrong direction, so I'm going to extend the legs just on one side, which is going to get me almost perfectly vertical, and then I'm going to loosen up this knob here to get it completely perfect, now this is very important for using your bullet drop compensator, right? Your bullet drop has to be completely perpendicular or vertical to the ground in order for it to be on point. Okay. So that's the CV Life bipod, $45. We're gonna talk about this in more detail. Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to be talking today about this CB Life bipod. So this is a budget $45 bipod that is packed with a lot of features, okay? Uh, so I did a video earlier where I was actually shooting it on this rifle over here. Um, but I figured I'd let me put it on this rifle here because the colors kind of match. And I love FDE. I've got so many rifles colored black that, you know what? Uh, I now kind of prefer rifles in other colors. So, so this, bi this bipod does come in black or FDE. I did a video last week. It was kind of like an initial impression, uh, you know, where I did kind of the unboxing. Um, it, you know, basically it comes in a box like this. Uh, they give you an Allen key and they give you a set of directions, which I did not read when I did the initial impressions. I did kind of get a chance to read through this stuff. Uh, two things that kind of stand out after having read these uh, directions uh, is that this bipod can support up to 22 pounds uh, and that after 100 rounds they recommend that you make sure you tighten it. Okay? Um, so uh, let's talk about this bipod. Some really interesting features. So first of all you can just pull it down and it locks into place okay to now once it locks into place you got to push the buns to go up or you can come all the way back down okay um, and the uh, like right now I have the quick detach on this side now you might say hey why would I want to fold back but if you want to switch it around with the quick detach on the other side yeah you need the ability to fold all the way forward or all the way back okay so um, the legs do extend the legs extend the buttons are it's got these buttons over here that kind of fold it in on the on the back side so they extend like that um, it, there's some pretty good elevation on this. I mean, the thing gets pretty tall. Weight, you know, on, on, if you're shooting off a table, it's like, why would you ever need this thing to be this tall? Uh, however, if you're shooting on uneven ground, uh, you know, you might, you might need this. And, uh, prior to this section, I did a video where I was shooting on some very uneven ground where what I did is, you know, I had to, I had these legs set at different lengths uh, in order to kind of even out the ground, okay? So that's something that, uh, I mean, if you only shoot on a table, you're never going to have to do it. But if you're shooting prone on uneven terrain, you need to be able to set these legs to different positions, okay? Now, once you get these legs set to different positions, it, it may not be perfectly vertical, okay? Um, so what you can do is you can find, you can loosen up this knob here, right? So once you loosen up this knob, it allows it to swivel. So when you're on the ground like this, you can swivel. So you can really fine tune it to get it perfectly vertical. And then you can turn the knob and tighten it up just, you know, perfectly. So you can lock it into that position. And that's really important if you're using a bullet drop compensator. Because in order for your bullet drop to work properly, it has to be vertical, right? Because that's how you originally zeroed it in. If your bullet drop is off to the side... You know, when you're looking at it, it's, it's not going to work right. So you have to have your scope completely vertical to the ground. On some higher-end scopes, they even uh, include, like, a leveling bubble to make sure that's, like, built on the scope to make sure that it's perfect. Um, I mean, I don't go that far. I mean, I just need it to be reasonably level to the ground to make sure that my bullet drop works. Okay? So um, it, now, in addition to, we said the, the legs extend like this, okay? We said that you can loosen up this knob. And let me show it to the camera. And basically, this will swivel this way, but it will also swivel this way. So if you're on the ground and you need to turn it like this, you can turn it like this. Uh, and 
sometimes it might not just be a, a, an issue of like moving left and right but the way the bipod is sitting on the ground in order to position it you might need you might need the bipod sitting like this because that's just the best place for these feet to rest right because sometimes on the uneven ground this may not be the best position that might be the best position okay so 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 that type of flexibility um, in a $45 uh, budget bipod um, I've, I've not seen before okay um, I mean just I mean I've got other bipods that are in this price range that don't have all these features right so that folds up like this okay now one of the other things about this is that it does have the quick detach okay um, so the quick detach right is nice so that you can quickly detach it um, however one of the and this is like I guess the one negative that I have found about this the that quick detach like right now I have this tightened like finger tightened right okay so I use the allen key to just get it finger tight right so that it's it's tight and it won't move and then when I loosen this up on, so, on, on this one, I can, there you go, I can kind of get it off, okay, but um, here's the thing, now this isn't necessarily, this isn't necessarily a problem with the bipod, uh, this might be, might very well be a problem with the uh, tolerances on these, um, uh, on, on the three slot rails, right, on, on the rails, because on this one, I can kind of get it off, right, once I finger tighten it, however, on this one, once I finger tighten it, Right, so let me use the Allen key to loosen this up and get it in. So I don't think that this is a, that big of a deal, but I think it's something that you guys should definitely be aware of. So I'm going to loosen this up. Okay, I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to, I'm going to finger tighten it with the Allen key. Right. Now these two uh, three slot rails, uh, they came from the same manufacturer. So sometimes there are tolerance issues, right? Even within the same manufacturer. All right, so let's see if I tighten this up. Well, let's up a little bit. It went a little too far. A little too far. Okay, so I've got this set now at a position where I can where it's pretty, it's, it's firm, right? When I push it down, lock it in place, it's firm, okay? But then when I go to pull this off, it won't come off. Um, okay, so let's, now I pretty much have to use the Allen key to get it off. So, so now this is most likely an issue with the Picatinny rail. Um, and the way I did it is like, okay, so there's Picatinny rail up here. Let's, let's attach it to the top rail, right? Because usually, with the top rail, that being the more expensive part, they usually get it right. So let's get this set right. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it in place. So I've got it closed now, and I'm going to get it firm. Okay, so what I did is I, I, I basically, I, I closed this, and then I I, um, I turned the Allen key. and So it's in position right now where it is firm. Not overly tight, but it is firm. And now let's see, can I get it off? So I'm having an issue, right? So with the top rail, the reason why I'm using, oh, there we go, I just got it off. So you can, it, it, it should kind of work, but it's one of those places where you, there we go, we got it in. So just be aware with these rails over here. Now, one, one of the solutions is that you can like kind of file down the edge of the Picatinny rail here to bring it in to, and that will, that will fix the problem, okay? But, I mean, just for comparison's sake, let's get this off. Okay, we got this off. Got, here I've got a um, magnifier, which also has the quick release. Let's get that on there. Okay, so now this is, you know, I mean, I mean, it just goes on. There's no shake. There's no, so I'm just using this as a, as a comparison point. Let's go to the bottom one that we had some issue with. So we had an issue with this before. So this, so on the bottom one, this locks in place, right? So again, we're just using this. Obviously, you're not going to put a magnifier on the 
the bottom of the picture too, but you can see how there's something. Now, mind you, this is a $200 piece, right? So everything on this is going to be a little bit more expensive. So this, for whatever reason, will work on that same rail. If I put it on this one. There you go. Locks into place on that one. Let's put it on the top rail over here. So there, there is tolerance issues on all of these rails. There you go. Locks in place on this one. So there's definitely a tolerance issue, right? Um, and the, 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 the inconsistency here is the rails. But for whatever reason, this quick attach is seems to be a lot more accommodating. Uh, whereas this quick attach, again, we're talking about a $45 item here. Uh, but again, I, I thought it was important to just point out the, the one negative, whatever it is. So with this item here, I just can't quite get it on there. I have to go back to the Allen key. So you can kind of loosen this up just a little bit. So that it's, remember, but it has to be kind of tight because I did kind of find a sweet spot where it was like just just loose enough to catch it and lock it. But if you start firing a lot of rounds, it's, it's going to start coming loose. So I, you, in most cases, you're either going to have to uh, use the Allen key to lock it in place, in which case you may have some difficulty getting it off. There you go, cut it off. Um, or the easier thing is to just basically... Because remember, these things are pretty cheap. They're like, I don't know, whatever, 5 to $10. Um, work on this a little bit over here, right, on this Picatinny rail. File it down just a little bit so that you can get that right tension where you can clamp it in. You got the right, uh, you know, that right tightness. Uh, this is the cheaper part, right? So this is the part that you want to modify. Um, so that's kind of like the only thing that you have to work with, right? You're going to have to work with. Other, other than that, I mean, for $45... Um, there's no doubt in my mind that this is probably, this is the best bipod I have seen really at $45. Um, so, uh, it, it's, you know, it's, 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 and it's pretty sturdy. Um, I've shot this prone loading up on the bipod. Okay. What, what, what do you mean by loading up? Yeah, let's get this back on. You know, basically that's when you're applying some forward pressure. So basically loading up is like, let's say if this were ground over here. You know, when you're shooting, you're going to pull, push into the bipod a little bit to create a little bit of pressure. So this, I mean, I'm not putting too much pressure on this, but it seems like it will be able to hold up to a reasonable amount of, of pressure for the type of shooting that most people do, okay? Um, now, I mean, can you, you know, hook this up to a tree and hang from it? I, probably not, no. Uh, but it seems like it's it's pretty sturdy right because I'm, I'm pulling it down and i'm pushing on it and it's it's able to take a, a reasonable amount of pressure for the type of shooting that i do in the woods where i'm like applying a little bit of pressure forward uh into the bipod to try and get into a more uh steady position take this off there you go so I, now what I think is also happening is this rail might start be starting to wear in a little bit. Okay. So again, that's one of those things that you're going to have to work with. I, I think for the $45, it's, it's worth dealing with it, right? It's worth, you know, filing down your, your Picatinny rail a little bit or, you know, making it work for you. Um, now, one of the other things that's worth mentioning is uh, if you look over here, this, the way this closes, I'll give you guys a close up. Okay. So this is spring loaded. See how those things kind of lock in place. So that is spring loaded, right? Now, one of the things you want to be aware of is those little springs in there are not captured, right? So if you loosen this thing up too much, right? And this thing separates, which it will, because I already tried it, and it separates, those springs will fall out. They're not captured. They'll, they'll fall out. Uh, and then like on ground like this, on gravel, you're never going to find it, okay? So be careful not to over loosen the screw and actually have this separate because those springs are going to come out and you're not going to find it it's still going to function without those springs right you don't need those springs but they are a nice convenience to have to have in there okay so here's a close-up of the bipod these are the buttons that you use to to fold it it'll fold this way 
it'll fold back the other way. Now from here, you, you know, it, it only locks in the down position. Up here, you know, it, it kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't lock up there. So you can like quickly deploy and then it locks there, okay? There's the knob that you loosen up so that you can, you know, you can rotate this left and right, turn it like this, and then you can tighten this up and then this locks in place, right? So you can see that it cannot move, okay? Um, and over here are the buttons. You see those buttons? You can, if, you don't, if, if you don't know they're there, you might not, you know, because they've got it so like nicely, it, it, it kind of blends in so nice. It, it's actually very pretty. I like the look of this. It's a very good looking bipod. Oh, the other thing is, you, these um, the, the height here is marked. So you can make, if you like, if you're on a particular place, particular ground, and you need to have these at a certain height, they do have markings here. So you can know that these are in the same position and you can be consistent. So let me know what you guys think. I will put a link in the description and in the comments in case you guys are interested in buying this. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, for $45, like I said, uh, it's, it's pretty sturdy. You know, I, I'm able to apply a, a decent amount of pressure on it while I'm shooting. Uh, I, I like the all the adjustments that it has. The one thing, like I said, I have to work around, right? I have to work around uh, is is the the locking mechanism here. Uh, and again, that might not even be so much. This is probably more of a, of a rail issue than a locking issue. However, I have noticed that some locks are more forgiving than other locks. Okay, uh, like the other one over here that I use as a demonstration. This one is just happens to be a lot more forgiving. Again, this is a two hundred dollar item versus a forty five dollar item. Um, but just again, I, I want you guys to know exactly what you're getting, the, the pros and the cons, okay? But uh, overall, for $45, I mean, right now, this is my best bipod, okay? So thanks for watching. Drop some comments below. I'll talk to you all soon.